Well hello miners, welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Well today I want to show you probably the simplest, easiest couple of ways to do skies. A couple of the different ways I use. Usually when you're doing a sky that's part of a more complex landscape, you want the sky to be simple. You don't want it to detract or take away from the rest of the picture. So you don't want a lot of complex clouds. And most of the clouds that I've demonstrated so far have been a little more involved. Usually when you're doing a sky to accompany a more detailed landscape, you want something very simple. Maybe no clouds at all, maybe just very slight clouds. I want to show you the two ways I do it. They're very simple, they're very easy, and I'm just going to do skies. There's not going to be any uh, landscape in here, so, and I recommend you practice them that way also. Now today I'm painting on a Hanamula Expression block, 100% cotton rag block, very nice paper, cold press, 140 pound. The paper doesn't matter as long as it's uh, good cotton paper like Arches or one of those. I don't recommend you do this on pulp. You'll get a blotchy, streaky mess. Big wet washes just don't turn out very well on pulp paper. Now the first method, just if you're painting along, the first method just involves tissue. So have that ready, just sort of balled up loosely. Have one or two of those sitting to the side ready. Because sometimes in a sky you've got to move quick. I recommend you pre-wet your paper. I'm using a three quarter inch flat. This is not very big area. Um, I like to try to get a nice graduated wash, but I, but I first get the whole paper wet. And this takes a couple coats, usually one coat to get water on there, another coat which kind of primes it, then another coat once that soaks in, just to sort of sit, help sit on top. And if you want to paint bigger, the process is still the same, but you might scale up to a bigger brush like one of these. These are both silver black velvets. This is I think an inch and a half and this is a two inch. I also quite often use these uh, Sterling Edwards blending and glazing brushes. They're stiffer. They kind of push that water into the paper a bit. But I'm just going to use a three quarter inch flat which works fine for something smaller like this. And I want to get plenty of water on here till it looks like it's not really uh, soaking in much anymore. I don't want puddles or drips or runs but I do want a nice sheen. Now when adding pigment it's kind of difficult to demonstrate how much pigment but you want pretty concentrated pigment. You don't want a lot of water because the water is already on your paper. So you want it wet but you want a fairly concentrated mix. And I like to keep it moving. If you let it sit too long, uh, you'll end up with a stain. Most skies as they get to the horizon are lighter. So I like to kind of try to graduate mine if I can. Keep in mind too, this will dry lighter. Um, this is just cerulean blue. Cerulean blue is probably the most iconic sky color. You can't go wrong with cerulean blue, okay? I don't really mind on mine if I have a few streaks. I think that looks natural. I know you get those picture-perfect skies sometimes that don't have a cloud in them, but I, I like a few streaks just for character. But again, the key word on these today is simple. These are just where you maybe only have a little bit of sky showing. It all has still a sheen. Let me see if I can get that to show you. See that sheen? Semi-gloss. I, I guess the best way to describe it would be semi-gloss. As long as that's happening, you can still go, do a good bit. As you add more pigment, make sure you're not adding more water. That's the biggest mistake people make on skies, and they end up with a big back run mess. Obviously, if you have a tree line, uh, you're going to either want to mask that tree line or it's going to need to be a dark tree line over this. Or this where it graduates to almost white, that needs to be where your tree line starts. Uh, if your trees are going to be darker, it's okay to go ahead and put down the sky and then paint over the sky. But you want to make sure you graduate it out to where there's not a lot of color where your trees or your 
distant hills or whatever it is in your buildings, whatever it is in your landscape, where they are. At this point, I'm going to take one of these balled up tissue. I just hold it loosely and don't overdo this. Uh, I'm just going to have a little, and you want to press in. Fairly good. Actually, I may have waited just a little too long because I was expecting slightly sharper, crisper edges. But again, uh, if this were a simple landscape, it really wouldn't matter much. Just an impression of clouds is all I want. You know, maybe I'll have one just sort of tipping in here from the top. Yeah, I definitely think I waited a little too long. And that would be one of the things you could practice, different stages at which you lift out. Now, if you're familiar with backwashes and you know how to control them, uh, you can add a little bit of water and do controlled back washes, back runs. Don't do that though, unless you've experimented with that and you know how to control them. Let me sh see if I can demonstrate up here where it's darker. You probably can't see. All I'm adding is clear water. I almost hesitate to show you this because again, I'm, I'm advocating for a simple, just slight impression of a sky. And in case you wanted to crisp up a few of these edges, you see how that lightened up? And I'm creating a very controlled backwash just pushing that pigment back, just with some clear water. And I try to pick it back up before it gets too um, edgy, you know, produces too much of an edge. But I would call that a more intermediate to advanced technique. If you're not even sure how to create backwashes or why they happen, they happen when too much water hits the surface on a wash that's drying and it's not dry yet, then don't do it. And again, it's not necessary. It's just a cool little technique if you can learn it for detailing. So uh, basically that's it. I mean, you see how easy that was? That's my simplest, easiest sky. And the more complex that your painting gets, um, maybe you want to model that. Or you wait till this is completely dry, completely bone dry, and you can glaze. Maybe add a spray, like with a spray bottle, and add some darker washes to the underneath part of those clouds, if you're doing a cloudscape. If you're doing a very simple cloud, formation just to add to a, a painting we keep it simple keep it very simple all right let me show you the second way and i use this a lot in uh, plein air because it's really easy to do you don't need tissue with you or anything and a lot of times in plein air i have again just a little area of sky i need to kind of pop in there a lot of times i'll pop it in at the very end and i just don't want it to be very complicated the difference here is that you paint your clouds first and this works better for streaky clouds rather than uh, bald kind of cottony fluffy clouds just gives you a nice little subtle streak in your sky I like to have just the ever so slight amount of color in my brush I could paint clear water but I just want to be able to see so the way this technique works is you actually paint where your clouds are going to be trying to put enough pigment in there that hopefully you can see it. Let me make it a little darker because the surrounding blue color will be much darker. So let's say there's a cloud, okay? And you want to keep this shape nice and wet. I'm going to paint another one over here, okay? It's just sort of these diagonal, slightly fluffy but slightly streaky kind of clouds. And just keep an uh, eye on that sheen to make sure that it's still there. Now what you're left with, and do not pre-wet your whole paper. That's kind of key for this technique. I mean, this, this kind of cloud technique takes just a couple minutes. It's, it's really quick and easy. I'm gonna, uh, I used cerulean blue before. I'm going to add a little cobalt blue to that just for a deeper. And what you do is you just paint in the negative areas and you touch the edge of these clouds 
come down here touch if you want to leave a few little sort of hard edge blank spots get some nice juicy pigment in there paint the area around it I'm sort of lost my uh, my wetness there it started to dry it's okay if the sky isn't perfectly even you know perfectly even bla a blue you can even dab you know a little wet and wet in there just get in there and and I mean this is simple it's easy but it does take a little practice and just go back then where the sky is blue and just make sure these washes are sort of melding together Again, this is a great sky technique for on location. It's just very expressive. You can paint back over areas if you really wanted more color in certain parts. Leave a few hard edges here if you want. They're your clouds. As Bob Ross would say, they live in your world. You make them look the way you want them to look. So there you go. Simple as that. Two very easy, simple cloud approaches. Practice them. Use them. Get in. Get out. Don't overwork it. All right. I've removed the tape. They're both dry. And they made really pretty nice little skies. Would work on a number of different landscapes. This one a little more dramatic. This one you'll get crisper uh, clouds if you do it while the water and pigment are wetter. I waited a little too long. Wasn't sure. It's a very warm day. It was very warm in my studio. So this was drying quick. Actually, I'm going to show you again just with the uh, tissue. Try to catch it in an earlier stage uh, just to show you the difference. Um, so the drying stage makes a difference. So again, have your balled up tissue, loosely balled up, ready, ready to go. So you don't have to go fumbling for it. And I've got this on an angle, about a 30 degree angle. So the moisture is carrying it to the bottom. And that moisture will even that out nicely. All right, I've got a nice graduation going here. I'm getting a, a little buckling, so it's starting to pool in the center a bit. But I'm going to catch this at an earlier stage, and you'll see the difference it will be quite dramatic in terms of how much water and pigment it picks up and I like to rotate the tissue around if you ball it up too tightly you'll just get a round cottony shape so you want to keep it loose and just sort of rotate it around that's what I like to do you can do it with paper towel too. You, you'll get some slightly uh, different, more angular shapes sometimes with paper towel. And it's nice. A lot of times you never know what to expect. Uh, you have to learn to kind of go with it a little bit. It's kind of hard to exactly plan how it's going to look. You can a little bit. But this looks like a nice cloud bank that's settled towards the ground. That would be great for uh, backgrounds that are not quite so dark. And the sky would show through. This Hanamula expression acts a little differently. It seems to stain a little more than, say, on arches. But the technique works still sufficiently, I think. Just keep those clouds looking nice and irregular, and you'll be good. We'll go ahead and do this uh, streaky sky again, too, just to give you another example of the same thing. I'm going to use a different brush. I'm going to use this round, soft brush here. And again, don't forget you're painting the clouds where it's going to be mostly white. You're, you're making it wet, basically. So you need to be able, you either need to add a little color, just to recap, to your paint, or just get a glare where you can see where your water is. You're basically painting where it's not wet, but coming in contact with where it is. I'm going to paint this a little faster so it all stays softer. It's the coolest thing ever if you can get it right. It's, it's like instant sky. If I can get this all 
painted quicker, then I'll have more bleeding, less splotchiness, and the blue parts. Although the other one was acceptable, I thought. And I got a nice bunch pooling here on the bottom. So I don't want it to have a darker edge drying there. So I'm going to lift that up. And I mean, you see that took less than five minutes right there. You can fiddle with it a little bit if you want. If you've got a nice, fresh, you know, sort of acceptable look, just leave it alone. It's better to leave it alone. And, and in fact, I got a little bit of a backwash occurring there because there was a good bit of water in this white area. But I don't think I'm going to try to pick that up or correct it because I think it's actually working to make a cloud formation. So that's what's great about the mind of watercolor was when it gets involved, paint something for you. All right, so there you go. I've removed the tape. It's all dry. Uh, that turned out really nice. I think that I have a nice cloud bank here with a very light horizon to paint against if I need that. This is a darker sky, but some very dramatic streaks in there. Love that. And you can make this a lot more subtle if you want. But again, these two tricks uh, are very, very versatile, and they are easy. And literally, each sky took me probably five, no more than eight minutes a piece, not counting the drying time, of course. So give these a try and have fun with it. Thank you so much, Minders, for watching. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, patrons, for supporting this channel and sponsoring these episodes so I can continue to put out more. And we will see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.